Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. I am Carl Vincent Gapasin. I am a plant pathologist from the National Crop Protection Center, UPLB, under Project Saray. Project Saray, it is the smarter approaches to reinvigorate agriculture as an industry in the Philippines. So we're now in phase two po. So for today's topic, uh, I'll be going to discuss about the common diseases of rice in the Philippines. So when we heard the word disease, sa ngayon, alam ko po, ang unang pumapasok sa isip natin ay ang COVID-19. So talaga namang napakadami pong napervision ng sakit na ito ngayon. But for today, uh, ibang sakit naman po ang ating alamin. Ito ang uh, diseases under rice. Just to give you an overview or outline of what I'll be going to discuss for today. So ito po. Uh, first, the overview of the pathogen, uh, si coastal organism. Uh, kung sino ba siya at ano ba siya. Signs and symptoms. Uh, dun din sa part na diagnosis or how to diagnose and to identify yung iba't ibang diseases under rice. And of course, the preventive measures or the disease management ang um, pinaka-importante po. We'll be going to discuss also the bacterial diseases, viral diseases, and fungal diseases of rice. Just to give you a background po about what plant disease diagnosis is all about, it is the identification of specific plant disease through their characteristic symptoms and signs, including other factors that may be related to disease process. So ano-ano po ba ibang mga diagnose, uh, diagnostic na pamamaraan o yung pamamaraan po to diagnose ang ating plant? at kung may sakit po ba siya. So we have the symptomatological uh, diagnosis. Ito yung itsa-check po natin yung ating uh, plant o yung ating crop, si rice, kung uh, ano yung nasa surface niya o ano yung uh, nakikita nating hindi normal kay rice. Yun po yung symptomatological. Then we also have these laboratory techniques. Uh, we isolate uh, yung pathogen po na nakolect natin sa field. Then i-verify po natin if it's uh, the, the pathogen or kung siya ba talaga yung pathogen na nag-i-infect dun sa ating rice. We also have this field validation. So, kinakandak po ito to check po kung tama po ba yung nakuha nating pathogen sa field at yung na-isolate po natin sa laboratory. So, yun lang po yung sum ng diagnose, uh, diagnosis sa ating uh, plant. So, what is science? Sign uh, refers to the structures of the pathogen that are found associated with the infected plants. Example po nito yung mga bacterial ooze, fungal mycelia, spores, protein bodies, sclerotial bodies, at various growth stages. So si signs po, ito yung structure mismo ni pathogen o siya mismo si pathogen o yung causal organism na nag i po sa ating rice. So next po is symptoms. Symptoms naman po are the expression by which the host plant or pathologic condition by which a particular plant disease may be distinguished from other diseases. So, si symptoms naman po ay si manifestation po ng disease. So, ito yung manifestation ng disease. Ito yung respond ni plant dun sa disease. So, example po nito yung wilting, spots, chlorosis, rots, blights, at stunting. So, later po, uh, didiscuss po natin dun Discuss po natin yung iba't ibang signs and symptoms po uh, with respect to the specific disease po under rice. So, first one is the bacterial diseases of rice. So, we have this bacterial leaf blight. So, bacterial leaf blight uh, caused by Sancomonas oryzae, PB oryzae. So, uh, ang ini-infect po ni bacterial leaf blight ang napart ni rice, most likely, most likely po ay ang leaf part ng rice. So yung common common local name niya po is blight or paltik kung naririnig niyo po siya. So yun ang common, common local name niya sa Tagalog or sa Pilipino. Uh, stage of plant infested. So from transplanting to heading stage, kaya pong infect po ni bacterial leaf blight. So ganun po siya kalala. Kaya niyang infect ang ating rice plant from transplanting to heading stage. So signs and symptoms so, water soak stripes at the margin of fully developed leaves, lesions, and large in length and width. Margins are wavy and turn light brown in few days. So, as you can observe po dito sa uh, first picture, <coughs> makikita nyo po yung light brown lesions po dun sa margin ng ating rice leaf. So, yan po ang pinaka-common na 
na symptoms po na binibigay po ng bacterial leaf blight. So dito naman po, uh, mapapansin po natin itong uh, tung tubig na uh, sa ibabaw po sa surface po ng ating lip. So ito po yung tinatawag natin uh, bacterial ooze. So dyan po located yung ibang mga bacteria or ito po yung pwede natin i-isolate at dalhin sa lab para ma-check po yung causal organism kung si bacterial lip blight po ba talaga yung nag infect dun sa ating crop. So appearance of milky or opaque dew drops. So ito po yun. On the surface of young lesions in the morning, is a sign of bacterial blight infection. So, ito po, itong light brown sa margin po ng lip, it is the symptoms of bacterial lip blight. Ito naman po, sa ibabaw po ng, sa surface po ng lip, ito naman po yung signs ng ating bacterial lip blight. So, amber-colored beads and these spears are the ooze of the bacterial mass. So, next naman po is the bacterial Bacterial lip streak or disantomonas oryzae PB oryzae cola. So si uh, si bacterial lip streak, uh, parehas po siya ni bacterial lip blight. Ang in-infect po nila is the lip part of our rice plant. So kaya naman pong infect ni bacterial lip streak ang ating rice plant from tillering to heading stage po. So ganun din siya, ganun siya kalawak. Ganun yung damage na pwede niya pong ibigay sa rice field po natin. So the sign and symptoms po, uh, lesion starts as small translucent streaks and enlarge lengthwise and may advance laterally over the larger veins. So mapapansin nyo po dito, uh, ito po yung translucent streak. So it, it is the symptoms po na binibigay po no ating bacterial leaf streak dun sa ating leaf ng ating rice. So later on po, itong lesions na po ito ay magkakawali. So mag-form po siya ng ganito, magsasama-sama po sila. Then, brown lesions which cause severe damage po dun sa susceptible varieties po natin. Sa later stage po, disease development. So, the disease will develop po sa later stage hanggat maging brown po yung entire leaves po natin. And eventually, ito yung cause po ng pagkamatay po ng mga leaf po ng ating rice. So for management strategies po ng ating mga bacterial diseases, uh, we have this plant. Uh, first one is the plant-resistant varieties. So uh, it is the uh, uh, highly recommended way of uh, managing these bacterial diseases. So uh, we have these resistant varieties. We can search or we can look from the website of Philippine Rice Research Institute or Phil, or Phil Rice and IRI, the International Rice Research Institute, for the list of the resistant varieties against these bacterial diseases po. So next one, we also have this execution of variety of cultural management. So ano-ano po ba yung variety ng cultural management po natin? So first one, pwede po tayong uh, mag-conduct ng crop rotation. So sa crop rotation po, ito po yung pagpapahingin po natin si yung pagtatanim ng rice dun sa ating field. Then magtatanim po tayo ng ibang plant na hindi po host ni bacterial leaf blight or bacterial leaf streak. So pwede tayong mag-move Uh, sa pagtatanim ng mga legumes na hindi po host ng ating bacterial lip blight, uh, bacterial lip stake at bacterial lip blight. So next one, uh, nakakatulong din po if magkakaroon po tayo or uh, magka, makakandok natin sa ating field yung balance application po ng fertilizer. So si, bak si bacterial diseases po kasi is favorable po siya dun sa mataas na application po ng nitrogen sa field. So iwasan po natin yung magdagdag po tayo ng uh, uh, excessive amount po ng fertilizer. So next one is uh, keep fields clean. So sa keep fields clean po, ito yung uh, aalisin po natin yung mga undesirable na, na bagay dun sa field o yung mga weeds. So uh, weeds, grasses, yeah, mga broad leaves. So uh, sila po kasi minsan yung nagkakos po or natatransfer po dun sa mga plants na yon yung... Uh, yung inoculum po nitong mga bacterial diseases. So, nagkakos po siya ng infection for next cropping season. So, iwasan po natin or kailangan magkaroon po tayo ng malinis na field para hindi po ganun mag-manifest uh, or hindi ganun yung damage na ibibigay nitong mga bacterial disease po natin. So, yun po. Uh, let's move on to fungal diseases of rice naman po. For fungal diseases of rice, we have this rice blast disease po. So, sa rice blast disease, it is caused by magna forte oryzae po. 
So dito sa picture, ito po yung uh, spores po ni Rice Blast. Or, ito po si Magna Forte or Rice through uh, micros microscope po. So uh, si Rice Blast po, kaya niya pong infect yung ating rice sa iba't ibang klaseng, uh, sa iba't ibang part niya po. So from leaf, collar, panicle, nodes, kaya pong infect po ni Rice, bl ni rice Blast yan. So it is a fungal disease of rice that is found both upland and lowland environments. So water scarcity with high night humidity and low night temperature favors po yung development po ng ating disease. So this fungus po uh, is both airborne po and seedborne. So nakukuha po siya sa air na nito transfer po yung spores nito through air tapos nakukuha din po siya through sa ating seeds. So the uh, infested uh, the stage of plant that has been infested or kaya niya pong in, uh, infect ay from transplanting to heading po. So for signs and symptoms po ng rice blast disease, dun sa lip po uh, mapapansin po natin tong diamond lesion shape po na damage. Yan po, yan po yung symptoms. Then sa gitna niya po, uh, medyo whitish to gray po yung appearance. Then sa border po, brown border po yung pinapakita po nung uh, minamanifest po ni rice blast disease. Yun po ay sa lip part. So sa color naman po, entire lip blade dries up when the base of the plug lip is infected po. So yan po, mapapansin niyo po dun sa picture. So for panicle blast or dun sa greens po natin sa panicle, dark necrotic lesions that partially or completely cover the panicle base or the uppermost internode or the lower panicle leaves. So itong puti-puting puto or whitish to blackish uh, appearance po sa ibabo po ng ating greens sa may panicle, yan po ay uh, may ciliary growth, may ciliary growth ng ating rice blast disease. So node blast, node of the stem turns blackish and breaks easily. So yan po. So for the management strategies po, first one is planting of persistent varieties. So ayun po, uh, you can also look for the resistant varieties uh, from the website of Phil Rice and Erie against this rice blast disease. And also the execution of variety of cultural management po. So cultural management, we have the destruction of infested residue. Uh, kailangan alisin po natin yung mga uh, plant debris na infected na po ng rice blast disease. Use of non-infested seeds or yung free, uh, free seeds po, uh, mga seeds na wala pong sakit. Water seeding, continuous flooding, and avoid, avoid also excessive uh, usage of nitrogen in the field. Kasi favorable po sa growth ng uh, rice blast yung uh, excessive use of nitrogen in the field po. So for uh, fungicide application, uh, systemic fungicide like triazoles po can be used to control blast disease. So fungal application at heading can be effective in controlling the disease. So next naman po, we have the rice sheet blight of rice. The rice sheet blight. So it is caused by Rhizoctonia solani. So lesions may coalesce later. I uh, will uh, we'll further discuss about the signs and symptoms. The parts na ini-infect po ni rice sheet blight ay from leaf sheet to leaves. And the infected, uh, the, the stage of plant that is infested by leaf sheet ay from tillering to maturity po ng ating rice. So signs and, signs and symptoms common on both lowland and upland rice field. So this fungus attacks plant at different growth stages pero mas uh, distinct po sa pre-booting stage. So ito po yung damage uh, na nagkakos po ng rice sheet blight. So lesions may coalesce po to form, uh, uh, to form an irregular discolored areas. So ayan po yun, yung, yung discolored areas. So in paddy fields, the spots usually occur above the water line and quite frequently just below the ligule po. Spots are at first greenish-gray and ellipsoid which quickly enlarge and become grayish with blackish-brown margins. So ayan po, uh, mapapansin nyo po dun sa baba ng ating rice plant. So, ito naman po yung mga sclerotial bodies. So, sclerotial bodies is part of the structure of this rice sheet blight. So, ito naman po yung ma-observe nyo when we 
uh, look it on a microscope po. So, irregular in shape po siya. So, for management strategies po of uh, rice sheet blight, uh, we have this varietal selection for culture practices. Field sanitation, so yun, uh, kailangan malinis po yung field po natin para wala pong source ng inoculum for the next cropping season. Manage practices, uh, management practices to avoid dense canopy. So, sundin po natin yung tamang uh, sukat or pagkakalayo-layo po sa pagtatanim ng crop. So, mas madali po kasi mag-transfer si pathogen or si disease once na uh, hindi po natin susundin yung tamang uh, spacing po ng pagtatanim. Then also, uh, crop rotation. So, earlier na-discuss ko po kung ano yung crop rotation. And uh, for chemical control, use also fungicide. So, for fungicide... In, uh, for fungicide, use fungicide for uh, treating seeds po. So, yun po for rice sheet light. Next is the, rind, uh, the rice brown spot. It is caused by Helminthosporium rice or the Cochleobolus mayabianus. So, ito ulit yung spores po ng rice brown spot. So, yung in-infect po, in-infect na part ni rice brown spot ay ang leaf part ng ating rice. So, kaya niyo pong infect ang rice natin from tillering stage to maturity of rice. So, ganun kalawak yung, yung damage na pwede niyang i-cause pag hindi natin uh, uh, na-manage itong rice brown spot. So, for signs and symptoms, uh, the fungus is seedborne. So, seedborne siya. So, pwede po siyang makuha sa seed. Yung mismo sa seed na ando na po yung sakit. So, yun po yung seedborne. Serious so, when plants are heavily shaded when soil is deficient in potash and when, ri and when rice is grown in saline soil. So on leaves, the spots vary in size and shape from minutes, minute dots to circular or oval spots. So ayan po, uh, from circular to oval spots po, smaller spots are dark brown or purplish brown. So ganyan po yung itsura po ng rice brown spot sa field. So for management strategies po, improve soil fertility din po. So yung excessive amount of fertilizer, hindi rin po maganda. Then use of resistant varieties. Uh, then treat seeds with hot water. Then use fungicide for seed treatment po. So sa improve soil fertility, uh, first step po, ito po yung first step to manage yung brown spot po. So for doing so, Monitor po muna natin yung soil. Then, once na monitor na po natin yung soil nutrients, uh, regularly apply required fertilizer lang po. So, pwede po tayong magpa-test ng ating soil sa ating mga regional soils laboratory. Uh, sa pagkakalam po po, ito ay libre. Then, para malaman po natin yung available nutrients na na meron sa ating soil bago kung ano, pa, kung ano lang po yung idadagdag natin, yung tamang amount ng fertilizer na idadagdag po natin sa ating soil. So, treat seeds with hot water po uh, for 53 to 54 degrees Celsius po for 10 to 12 minutes before planting. Uh, ito po ay to control primary infection ng seed, sa seedling stage and to increase the effectiveness of treatment po. Pwede, pa rin po, pwede po natin i-presoak seeds in cold water for 8 hours. So, use of fungicide, uh, we can use propiconazole po for, sa, for seed treatment. So next uh, fungal disease po ay the narrow brown spot disease. It also called narrow brown leaf spot caused by Cercospora or Isae. So uh, parts of plant infested po is leaf, sheets, and panicle. So uh, dito sa center picture, ito po yung spores po ni narrow brown spot. So the disease po usually occurs... Uh, Pag potassium deficient po yung soil po natin and in areas with temperature ranging po from 25 to 28 degrees Celsius po. It appears during uh, uh, late growth stages of rice starting po from heading stage. So plants are most susceptible during panicle initiation. So for signs and symptoms po, uh, lesions are linear. So 3 to 5 mm in length about 1, point, uh, 1 to 1.5 mm in width along the leaf axis. So, ganyan po ka-distinct yung symptoms po na nakikreate po ng narrow brown spot disease. So, center of the spot is dark brown. So, medyo dark brown po yung center. Border fading toward the outer margin of the spot. 
So from uh, brown from dark brown to light brown po yung yung color po ni uh, narrow brown spot or yung symptoms ni narrow brown spot. So sheet lesions are the same as those on the lip or maybe longer. Yan po. So for the management uh, strategies, uh, use of resistant varieties po ulit. Uh, keep our fields clean, uh, remove weeds and weedy rice in the field and nearby areas. So to remove po at uh, kaya po natin tinatanggal yon para matanggal po yung mga alternate host or yung uh, other uh, host plant na pwedeng pagkapitan po ni narrow brown spot or other diseases po under rice. So if narrow brown spot uh, possess a risk to the field, uh, pwede po tayong pumunta sa chemical control. It's uh, application po ng propiconazole at booting stage 2, heading stage ay effective po. So also yung proper application of nutrients din po. Yun po yun para sa narrow brown spot of rice. Next naman po is for rice sheet rot of rice. Ayan, uh, rice sheet rot uh, caused by sa Saroclagium oryzae. Ang in-infect naman pong part uh, ng rice sheet rot ay collar. So ma uh, makikita po natin yung manifestation ng gantong, <coughs> gantong disease sa ating, uh, sa ating rice from heading stage 2 maturity of rice po. So the disease reduces grain yield by retarding or ab aborting panicle emergence. So once po na na-infect na yung, yung ating collar, Dun, uh, uh, hindi na po nagpo-produce ng maayos na grains or panicle yung ating rice crop. <clears throat> so, sheet rot is present in most of rice growing countries worldwide. Uh, worldwide, particularly po sa uh, uh, medyo rain-fed rice ecosystem. So, for the signs and symptoms, infection occurs on the uppermost leaf sheet po. Sa uppermost leaf sheet po ng ating rice. Severe infection po may cause panicles to be only partially exerted or rotted show abundant powdery fungus growth inside the leaf sheet. So, uh, yung uh, powdery fungus growth dito po yon sa uh, medyo ibabaw po or yung papalabas po nating panicle sa, sa puno po. Dyan. Partially emerged panicles may produce poorly filled grains. So, yung mapoproduce pong uh, grain pag na-infect po ni rice sheet rat ay hindi po ganun kaganda kumpara dun sa normal niya na pwedeng ibigay. So for the management strategies po for the rice sheet rat, apply a seed treatment fungicide like uh, carbendas, carbendasim the, or mancoseb as seed treatment and foliar spraying at booting stage po. So uh, it is effective po once na sa booting stage po natin siya in-spray. So syempre, andyan din po yung use of resistant varieties. Pinakauna po dapat natin gawin. Then use of healthy seeds, sanitize our field or keep our, our, fields, our fields clean. Then observe proper plant spacing. So ito po yung proper plant spacing para hindi po ganun uh, yung uh, pag-transfer po ng disease to one plant to another rice plant. So yun po. For rice stem rot naman po, a uh, rice stem rot caused by sclerontium or rice A. So signs and symptoms, ayan, uh, early symptoms are small, irregular black lesions on the outer leaf sheet near water level. So medyo dun sa mababang part po ng, leaf, uh, ng rice plant from outer leaf sheet po, nag infect po si ang ating, ang ating rice stem rat. So visible numerous tiny white and black sclerotia. So sclerotia or mycelium, ito po yun. Yan, yan po yung signs. Yung whitish to blackish po. Ito po itong whitish. Then itong medyo blackish po, ito po yung signs, ay symptoms po ng ating stem rot. Infective comes, largest and cause unfilled panicle and chalky grains. So once na-infect po nito, talagang hindi na po natin mapapakinabangan yung grains or yung panicle na ilalabas po ng ating rice crop. So kaya for management strategies po, uh, check po ulit tayo for resistant variety from the website of Erian Field Rice. Siyempre, uh, kailangan po natin sanitize yung ating field. Uh, kailangan natin uh, siguraduhin na marinis yung field natin na walang magiging source ng inoculum or ng ganito na pagkakapitan ni stem rot doon sa paligid. Then drain the field. So sa pagdidrain po ng field, uh, dinidrain po natin yung field para mamatay po yung natitirang inoculum or yung pathogen doon sa area from the last cropping season. 
then sa uh, sa reduced nitrogen split technique so sa sa fertilizer application naman po kailangan i-reduce po natin yung paggamit ng nitrogen or if need talaga siya ng rice plant uh, gumamit po tayo ng split technique or split application technique sa pag-apply po ng fertilizer for chemical control naman po so uh, for chemical control we have uh, fungicides such as perimzone and validam sin so it also shows effective against this fungus po So next one po is for bacani disease caused by Gibberella fujikeroi. So si bacani disease po uh, ang ininfect niya po is uh, technically the whole rice plant pero most likely yung roots and crown po nung ating rice plant. So kaya niyo pong infect yung ating uh, rice plant from seedling, vegetative, and tillering stage po nung rice up to post harvest. So kaya niyo pong uh, kaya niyo pong uh, i-damage yung ganong growth stages po ng ating rice plant. For signing symptoms po ni ni Bacani disease, so ayan po, ako makikita nyo po to sa field, siya po yung matataas, medyo yellowing yung itsura niya po at siya yung matataas dun sa field. So kala po natin ibang variety lang yun pero uh, cause na pala siya ng Bacani disease. So infected seedlings are easily identified po from the field because they are relatively taller. Yun po. Then pale com compared to healthy seedlings. Medyo pale green yung kulay niya po kumpara dun sa healthy green na nasa field na ating rice. So at later stage, infected plants become yellow and begin to wilt. So itong pale ito po, itong pale, uh, pale green na appearance po nung symptoms na binibigyan ni Bacani disease ay later magiging yellowish po siya. So may still present on the nodes and infected are sign of the pathogen. So sa nodes, makikita po natin yung mga mycelial growth na signs, sign po nung Bacani disease. So, ayan po, uh, ito yung itsura niya po sa field. Medyo yellowish na po yung iba. So, for the management strategies po, first one is uh, planting of host resistance. Using resistant varieties as a primary control is the utmost management po na pwede natin gawin sa, uh, uh, sa pagmamanage po ng Bacani disease. For cultural and uh, biological management, uh, use clean seeds. So, Ayun po, uh, paggamit ng malinis na seed sa pagdatanin para si Bacani disease po kasi ay seedborne and soilborne pathogen. So, maaring present na siya sa seeds or maaring present na po siya dun sa ating soil. So, use trichoderma for seedborne pathogen. So, application po ng trichoderma as a biological control agent po. Then, chemical control, applying of fungicide containing Benomil, Benomil or Benomil uh, dash T. So for dry seed coating uh, for dry seed coating to treat infested seed can be effective. Yun po. So next one is the rice false mat of uh, caused by Ustilaginoide virens. So si rice false mat naman po ito po yung itsura niya, yung spores niya po through microscope. So So uh, kung napapansin niyo po sa field yung medyo yellowish uh, yellowish to orange uh, growth ng uh, spores dun sa ating grains or dun sa ating panikel. So later po, magiging black po yan. So from this one, from, from ye uh, yellow to orange, to blackish appearance dun sa panikel po natin. So plant infested with false mat have individual rice grain transformed into mass of spore balls. So ito po yung spore balls. Then tong spores, uh, spore balls are initially orange and turn into greenish black when it matures. In most cases po, not all spiculates or panicles are affected but spiculates neighboring smart balls are often unfilled. So wala na pong laman yung mga, hindi man po siya ma-infect ni rice balls mat pero uh, na-damage niya na rin po yung production dahil wala rin pong laman yung katabi niya pong uh, green. Ayan. So parang most likely po wala pong laman yung mga nasa gilid niya kahit wala po siyang spore balls. So for management strategies, uh, so uh, ganun lang din po, kailangan nating uh, isanitize our field. Let's uh, keep the our field clean para dun sa inoculum or yung present presence ng inoculum or pwede niyang pagkapitan. So balanced fertilizer application pa rin po, especially for nitrogen. So uh, rice false mat is favorable for excessive amount of nitrogen in the field. So iwasan po natin yung paggamit ng madami o excessive amount ng nitrogen. Then, use certified and resistant varieties. 
po, for managing our rice phosphate. So, ayun po, next naman as is ang ating viral diseases of rice. So, for viral disease, diseases of rice, we have rice tungro virus cause po ng dalawang virus, the rice tungro vasiliform virus and the rice tungro spherical, spherical virus. So, ang ini-infect po o kayang infect, infect po na ating tungro or ng tungro virus ay yung ating whole plant po. So, from seedling to maturity, yung growth stages ng rice na kaya niyang infect o yung yun, uh, yun po yung uh, growth stages kung saan wapansin po natin yung rice tungro virus. So, the sign and symptoms po, uh, dun sa first virus po, uh, ma-observe uh, ma po natin yung yellowing. So, ganyan po, yellowing and stunting po ng ating rice crop. So, kung mapapansin nyo po, hindi po buong, buong rice field yung ini-infect niya. So, mapansin nyo po, meron dito, meron dito, meron dito. Hindi po yung buo. So, ganun po yung uh, main distinction po ni rice tungro virus. Then, uh, the other uh, virus po, uh, no yellowing pero mild stunting naman po yung binibigay niya. Then, both uh, viruses po na nag-infect po or nagkakos ng tungro virus uh, can give a severe yellowing and severe stunting. So, ganun siya. Uh, ganun ka siya ka-destructive uh, ka po sa ating rice field. So, uh, ito is a uh, uh, mode of transmission po uh, na itatransmit po si virus So, transmitted in semi-persistent manner by species of green leaf hopper or the nepotetic virusens in the most efficient. Ito po yung most efficient vector po nung tungro virus. So, ito po yung maliliit sa field. Kung mapapansin po natin din, masakit, siya yung masakit mga gat. So, siya po yan. Then, next one is the rugged stunt virus caused by rugged stunt uh, virus, RRSV. So, full plant din po yung in-infect niya. So from seedling to maturity yung growth stages na from seedling to maturity yung uh, growth stages kung saan natin ma-observe si ragged stunt virus po. So the signs and symptoms, so short, darker green, ragged leaves. So short and darker po siya. Then mukha siyang uh, mukha yung damage na ginawa na uh, kinakos ng uh, kinakos ng ragged stunt virus ay mukha siyang uh, uh, insect damage which is not then the swelling forming galls in the outer surface of leaf blades and sheets so ayan po yung pinoform niya form ng vein swelling vein vein swelling so ganyan po yung itsura ng damage ng rice ragged stand virus so transmission po nita transmit naman po si rice ragged stand virus through brown plant hopper po or the danila parvata lugens So next naman po is the grassy, uh, rice grassy stunt virus caused by the rice grassy stunt virus or RGSV. So full plant din po yung kaya niyang infect. From seedling to maturity naman po yung growth stages kung saan nagmamanifest or saan natin ma-observe si rice grassy stunt virus. For the signs and symptoms, mapapansin po natin na mukha siyang, uh, from the word itself, mukha siyang grass. Then... Erect and narrowing yung leaves niya po na hindi talaga normal once na inobserve po natin sa ating rice field. Abundant tillering. So ano lang, dahon lang po siya ng dahon. And yellow discoloration. So yun po yung main distinction po ng ating rice grassy stunt virus. So naitatransmit din po siya ng ating brown plant hopper. So for the management strategies po ng ating mga uh, viral diseases, Uh, Siyempre una po is paggamit po ng mga resistant varieties against this viral disease. So we have this virus resistant, vector resistant. So yung vector po natin is yung, uh, yung insect vector po natin na brown plant hopper and green leaf hopper. Then tolerant varieties po. And for cultural measures po, uh, synchronize planting with distinct follow period between cropping. Then avoid of late planting. So bakit avoid late planting po? Kasi maaaring... Uh, sa field po natin pumunta yung uh, yung vector po ng gantong virus once na nahuli po tayo then raging but effective only under low diseases po so effective lang siya pag hindi pa ganun ka-infect po yung ating rice field 
So once na infect na po ng viruses yung ating uh, rice crop, uh, medyo wala na po tayong magagawa doon kundi i-isolate po natin sa field yung uh, alam po natin na infected na po ng gantong virus dahil magkakos pa po yun na uh, once na i-transfer po or kinain po ng ng ating vector, may transfer niya pa po yun sa iba pong healthy rice clam. So mas maganda may isolate na po natin siya para hindi na siya mag ng uh, uh, hindi na siya yung pagkunan pa or para kumalat po yung ating viral diseases. So ayun po, uh, thank you so much for uh, listening for my presentation and also thank you so much for dun sa reference na ginamit, po, ginamit ko po from the uh, Knowledge Bank ERI, from the uh, experts in the National Crop Protection Center. So thank you so much. So ayun po, that's the common diseases of rice in the Philippines.